In the beginning, God created man in his own image. The competition began when man insisted on returning the compliment. People have created every false conception of God imaginable. Not only have they worked to make their deities palatable to the human mind, but they've set up their intellects and therefore themselves as gods. One of Christianity's arch enemies, atheist Anne Rand says, and now I see the face of God, and I raise this God over the earth, this God whom men have sought since men came into being. This God will grant them joy and peace and pride. This God, this one word, I. Representing New Age thought, performer Shirley MacLaine also allies herself with the losing side. We already know everything, she says. The knowingness of our divinity is the highest intelligence, and to be what we already know is the free will. Free will is simply the enactment of the realization you are God, a realization that you are divine. The rules of Christianity are unintelligible to those on the man-centered team, for Christianity neither flatters human beings nor presents God in an easy, palatable form. But as C.S. Lewis remarks, that is one of the reasons I believe Christianity. It is a religion you could not have guessed. If it offered us just the kind of universe we had always expected, I should feel that we were making it up. But in fact, it's not the sort of thing anyone would have made up. It has just that queer twist about it that real things have. In 1 Corinthians, we find the believers at Corinth playing for the wrong side. So Paul opens up God's playbook and he explains his truth as something they would never expect or invent. A crucified Messiah and a crucified self as the way to life everlasting. I want to leave you with some closing thoughts. Dying to self does not require a morbid, introspective, inferiority complex that leads to insecurity. Actually, those who have truly died to themselves depend solely on God. They no longer have to rely on their own plans and intellect to see them through. They are the most secure people on earth. In the Roman Empire, people sentenced to die by crucifixion had to carry at least a section of their cross through the city to their place of execution. This practice demonstrated to all observers that the condemned rebels had finally submitted to the state. In submission to the Father, Jesus carried his cross to Golgotha and was crucified on our behalf. Following him requires a similar crucifixion, the death of our stubborn wills and selfish desires. Let me ask you this question. Are you shouldering your personal cross? If not, friend, pick it up. Carry it daily. Nail your selfish desires to that cross and let them die. Only then will you experience a truly resurrected life. Doesn't Assyria sit crouching on the doorstep of your life, watching, waiting, wondering who you'll call for help? Whether the threat is a rocky marriage, a depleted bank account, endless hospital bills, or an immoral relationship, there is one whom you can turn to for help. I hope you will learn from the Israelites to trust not in human advice, but in God's wisdom. In this lifelong competition between wills, God and ours, continually choose His. What do you think of the cross? Do you trust the death and resurrection, what appear to be foolishness, are the very power and wisdom of God? Or do you stand with arms folded across your chest, skeptical, demanding a convincing sign, an irrefutable argument, before you'll consider turning to the cross for salvation? Remember, His foolishness is wiser than our wisdom, and His weakness stronger than our strength. So lay down your pride, Take up your cross and walk in salvation.